It's October, that means Inktober, and I'm going to be sharing with you some of my favorite inking tools, what they are, where to find them, and how to use them. Greetings everyone, welcome to the underground lair where we bring our creations to life. I'm Scott with Surfworks Art Labs. I'm a professional illustrator, designer, and mad creator because you know what? You have to be a little crazy to do this thing called art. And on this channel, we are going to do something a little crazy. For the whole month of October, we're going to be talking about inking because it's Inktober. So what better time to talk about that? Uh, I, I am a comic book artist and one of the things that I love doing is inking and I've got a lot of <laughs> time invested in inking. So I figured I'd pay that forward and show off a few of my favorite tools. Now, in the past, I mean, I just put out a video on inking art hacks, and I did another one before that. So I've shown some of these tools off before. I've talked about them, but I haven't really shown them in practice, how I use them. And in order to do that, I, you know, it's, it's getting close to Halloween, so why not dive into some monsters? I'm a big fan of the universal style monsters. Uh, this is sort of my take on it, so I've already penciled this. So I figured I'd take this Frankenstein's monster drawing and we'll apply, we'll just try some different techniques using some different tools, show you how they work, and, uh, and just give you some recommendations. So without any further delay, let's get to it. Okay, so today I'm gonna to show you some of my favorite tools for inking. I'm also gonna show you how I use them, and I'm gonna be providing links to where you can find them online. So first off, I'm gonna start with inks, and I'm gonna talk about the different inks that I use. So this is probably my favorite ink. This is Deleter Black number four. Uh, I also use Deleter Black number five. My four is getting a little low, so I'll probably use five for this demonstration. Um, but the reason why I like four, and this is more of a preference, is four seems to be a little more flat. Uh, five is a little more glossy. Um, and I don't know, I just like a matte finish, so typically I will go with the four, but both really good ink. They're really similar other than just the sheen on them. Uh, so Deleter Black is a manga ink. Uh, you can kind of see the Japanese lettering on the side. So it's not as readily available in the United States. You can get them online, like I said. Sometimes it might take a little while for them to ship to you depending on where you get it. Uh, but I don't know, for whatever reason, I find that the Japanese inks just work really <laughs> really well for comics. They just go on so smooth. Um, so those are my recommends. Um, the other, the one that's probably the most known is Black Magic. I used to bl use Black Magic all the time. It, I don't know, it seems like the formula recently, unless they've changed it again, but it was a little, it was a little watery. Uh, one thing you can do sometimes, if this is all you have, because I've been to, I've been in a pinch sometimes where I need ink and this is all like a particular store might have. Um, sometimes if you take the cap off and just make sure you don't have cats or anything around that's gonna dump it over, put it in a safe place and leave it out for even overnight. Um, some of it will dry up, but it'll, it'll kind of thicken up a little bit. Just a little tip on that. Another ink that I like that you can usually find in some of the craft stores here in the States, and that's Dr. P.H. Martin's Black Star. Again, this is a matte ink. Um, I like this one a lot as well. It comes with a nice eyedropper as opposed to, you know, the Higgins Black Magic is this hard plastic dropper that doesn't really work. So I don't know, It's uh, I do like this ink as well. Another pretty good ink is Speedball. This is a Speedball ink right here. Um, but feel free to test out different inks, find out what works for you, um, but like I said, that I'm, uh, my go-to is the Deleter Blacks. Um, now, as far as corrections, uh, for and I'll get into p correction pens and things as well as once I get into pens, but as far as ink, Deleter White, uh, number this is number two. There is a number one. I'm not sure what the difference. I don't think it's the sheen. I think it's more the thickness, but you know, correct me if I'm wrong on that. Again, Deleter works really well. It's good for covering mistakes or if you want to use, spe you know, for special effects, if you're drawing, you know, stars, or, or whatever the case is, uh, Deleter White. Uh, this one is probably the one you can find the most. This is Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White. Uh, I used to use Pro White. I don't know if they still make Pro White or not. I haven't seen it at the stores that often, um, so I'm not sure. Uh, but they're pretty comparable, and they're good for, you know, again, painting in white or corrections or whatever you have. And, uh, and then, of course, there's white correction pens, which we'll get into. Speaking of pens, why don't we start off with some of my my favorite drawing pen. So I recently, I'm primarily a brush inker 
and uh, I have a particular brush which I will show in a minute. But lately, uh, especially if I'm at a convention or if I'm doing a store signing or store sketches or whatever, I, I won't actually sign my name with this because it's more of a brush pen than, uh, than something you would sign your name with. But anyway, so this right here is a Zebra Fude pen. Again, you wouldn't be able to tell that because it's in Japanese. Unless you speak Japanese, I guess then you can read that. Um, but anyway, so this is probably my I think this is one, well I got two favorites. I'll show the other one in a minute. <laughs> but this is, this, is, this is the one, and this one's a little less expensive than the other one that I'm gonna show you. This one is not refillable though. Um, but it's a nice pen, and it's just a really good pen for uh, its, its portability. And it does have two tips. I rarely use this tip, um, but it's a little, you know, it's a little finer, a little more stable. Maybe I'll demonstrate that. But this is the tip that I usually go for. So I'm just gonna start with this Frankenstein and I'm going to sort of use this. Now the good thing, the thing you wanna do is when you're inking, you wanna make sure that, you know, I don't usually tape my paper down because I like to rotate it around because it's all, it's, it's kind of the movement in your shoulder that you wanna get. Um, maybe a little in your wrist, but don't, don't focus too much on your wrist. You wanna focus in that movement on your shoulder. Um, and, you know, typically, you know, sometimes I will pull, sometimes I will push, uh, but you, just whatever feels more comfortable. You don't want to you don't want to force it too much. You just want it to seem natural. The other thing you want to do is make sure, especially with these brush pens, that you're applying pressure, and that's going to give you. And you're going to have to experiment with it. That's going to give you thick and thin lines depending on how much pressure you start. So let's start with this Frankenstein. I'm just going in here. Okay, so you can see I'm going to go a little thicker under the brow because you also want to pay attention to your shadows. So typically your light source is going to be coming from up above, um, unless he's underlit, but in, in this case I'm just going to go from up above. And then we're going to get some pretty thick lines here. And, you know, my, as I get older, I find that my hand's not as steady as it used to be. Yeah, so this is a pretty, this is a pretty good pen. Um, just do a little more. I'm going to do some thinner lines here. And kind of see how there's some thickness here. Um, again, with the light source, this should be a little thicker underneath. Um, we've got right here, here's a ex good example of, you know, this is, me applying very little pressure. I just want to get where the scar is coming up here. I'm just going around the stitches here. So you can kind of see how, the, how thin that is as opposed to right here under the eyelid. I'm going to go a little darker. So that was the uh, Zebra Fude brush pen. Uh, this right here is a Kiritake Sume brush pen. This one is refillable. It's got a little cartridge in it. And you know, these are all synthetic brushes. Um, but this is, this is a really nice one. I do like this one. I'm gonna go here around the nose. I'm gonna start off. And I think maybe I prefer this this brush a little more than the other one, the one that I just showed, the zebra. But you know, sometimes I don't know. It just depends. Uh, I still find that I get a little, I get just a, a little better um, control with an actual brush as opposed to a brush pen. I'm just kind of moving all over because I want to demonstrate some different brushes. So typically, you know, and where you start, there's no particular pace you should start, but here you can see I'm getting pretty thin lines here again with that stitch. This pen is refillable. So that right there is the Kiritake Sume brush pen. Another one of my favorites. As far as brush pens goes, those are probably my absolute favorite. Um, other pens uh, that you can use, well, here's, here's another thing. Uh, this one doesn't have a lot of heavy blacks, but if I was going to go in, if it did have heavy blacks, for instance, if I wanted to fill in this whole uh, t-shirt here in black, that's a lot of ink. Um, and so what I do is I just get these water brushes and I fill them with ink. 
Um, they're typically for watercolor, but you can see how much how much ink you can get out of that. So I can go in and I can spot heavy blacks with this. Um, some people will go in if they're spotting blacks and they'll use uh, a Sharpie, which when you put, I mean, it looks pretty good when you first do it, uh, but the problem is that these are not light fast and eventually these will start to fade. They're not, I mean, you think, I mean, Sharpie, it says permanent marker, so you think it's permanent, but that permanent and light fast aren't exactly the same thing. So these will fade and discolor over time. So if you're going to be selling original art and you want people to hold on to that without it, you know, fading away, uh, I don't recommend ever using Sharpies for any kind of inking. Uh, like I said, I just fill one of these brushes, uh, water brushes, or um, the uh, fabric is still. I don't have one here, but these are, this is a pet pen. They make they make big giant fabric steel brush pens, and they're real thick. And I don't have one with me, but those are also a good way to spot some of your blacks. Now, sometimes you want a little, you want more of a uniform line, and for that, I use either a pigma, pigma, a pigma micron. This is a number eight, so this is a little on the thicker side, but they come in all different sizes. Um, but if you want more of a uniform line and that's just sort of a style choice, you can use that. These are good for doing some of these, you know, here we go in here with some of those uh, scars and everything, or particularly for something like this, these little areas, like I find, or like the eye. So eyes, trying to get that roundness with the brush, sometimes it's difficult. So a lot of times I might use a micron. Um, to, to, uh, to do the, the eyeballs or the little irises here. Um, the other thing, more detailed stuff like, you know, maybe this bolt, use that. You know, I might use a micron for that, uh, but definitely these, sti these little stitches. I'll go in here and use a micron. You know, so typically I don't I don't use a bunch. I mean, I'm not usually switching back and forth with that many tools, but I just want to demonstrate uh, what some of these different tools are. So, in addition to the microns, there is also the Copic Multi Liner, um, another really you know nice sort of technical pen. Again, you're not going to be able to get too much of a varied line weight, but some people like that. Some people want a more of a uniform line. So. In addition to those, you know, th th those are the more, I guess, technical pens, um, the multi-liners and the uh, and the uh, pigment microns, uh, pretty popular. You can usually find them in most places. Uh, but like I said, I'm more of a brush inker. So this right here is the uh, Windsor Newton Series Seven brush. This is a number one. Um, so I'm going to get, and with this, of course, they don't have, it's not, doesn't have a cartridge or anything like that. So we're going to just get some ink out. I'm going to get my deleter black. I'm going to put some ink in here. Just using these little pipettes because the one thing that I like about this Dr. PH Martins that, that I don't find with the, uh, deleter is they're, they don't have that, um, they don't have the, uh, the eyedropper. All right, so uh, typically what I use is, I've just got a little bottle cap here. Uh, it just makes it so I'm not dipping my, my brush too far into that reservoir. And you don't want, I mean, you just want to get it on the bristles. I don't, don't tr you'd want to make sure you don't go above the bristles with your, with your ink. And then typically I'll just test it out, make sure Make sure I've got just the right amount of ink. And again, that kind of comes with practice. And you can see up here where I'm trying to get it pretty light. I've even kind of broke the line, which will make it look even lighter. And I don't know, I just, I find I can get a little more control with the brush than the brush pen, but that's, you know, that's up to you. I found you know, people swear one way or the other. For me, just these aren't as portable this way. You know, I mean, you can't you can't bring ink everywhere you go. So those brush pens do come in handy when I'm doing like a, a convention sketch or whatever. 
and it looks in my haste to go over this, it looks like I've got a little smudging, but the good thing about ink is you can pretty much correct uh, any mistakes, well, most mistakes. We'll go in here with some of his little fur collar. And kinda, here you can see where you can get some pretty thin lines right in there, and then let's try a, a thicker line. So the thickest line is probably gonna be here, this under the chin. So let's go pretty thick, just so you can see. I just wanna show the different amount of line weight, and that's why you would wanna use a brush or a brush pen instead of a mi micron, because as you can see, that was all one stroke. Just It's all the pressure, whereas with a micron, you're gonna have to keep going over it and over it, because you're not gonna get that amount of flexibility. So the next tool I want to show off is the quill. So these are a few quills that I have. Uh, this one right here, I believe this is a Hunt 102. And this is a favorite for inkers. I, like I said, I'm primarily a brush inker, but um, you can get some really sharp uh, ink lines with a quill, but it is really hard to master. It's, it's pretty hard for me to master. So one of the things you wanna pay attention to is when you're inking is you don't wanna get it past that, uh, there's a little hole in the center there. I don't know if you can see that. Let me, I might have went too deep as I, no, that's, that seems pretty good, let me see. Okay, the other thing is it looks like, so the ink is resting sort of in this reservoir and you think if you turn it over it's gonna drip out, but, but it won't, it'll, it'll, gravity it will keep it in and everything. And then, uh, so, cause you're actually, you're drawing with the curved side facing down. So let's go in here. I'm gonna go around some of these lines. And the great thing about the quill is you can get just get these really nice, and you can also get a lot of line weight. It also depends on your, I think some of it depends on how much pressure you tend to use. If, you if you're really heavy handed, um, I find the quill requires, at least for me, requires a little more pressure. And one thing that I'm finding, and this wasn't the case when I was younger, but now that <laughs> now that my hand's getting a little more wobbly, having a little more pressure kind of helps me hold it straight. So, whereas I wasn't a super big fan of the quill, I'm finding that now I'm getting a little better at it, and it's it's I'm able to get some sharp lines. But I find I find with the at least for me with the quill, kind of start and then, you know, I guess if you're here, I'll do it like a pull. You can kind of see that. But um, with these smaller areas, just, you know, just these little areas in the, say the eyelids coming underneath, just kind of like to press and then kind of just pull it out and then you can kind of see I've got these really fine lines here. Um, it also works really good for like this, you can sort of see this sort of muscle and sinew pattern. You can just go through like that. Works pretty good for those really thin lines and I'll show you some of the line variation here. So I'm just gonna go on the shirt. So I'll start off thin, a little pressure and then I'm pressing more. And there's different size, just like with brushes, there's different size quills, but. So as far as corrections go, I already showed you the deleter white, but there's some other corrections you can use. Now, I guess I'll show you, this is probably my favorite. This is the Molotow uh, all for one pen. This is a pretty thick one here. Um, let me see if I, yeah. And I do this a lot for remarks, for blocking out large areas on covers that I'm gonna be drawing over. But this one's a pretty, they do come with different thickness. Um, this right here is four millimeter. They come with in a smaller thickness as well. But this is a really nice, these are a little more on the pricey side than say what you might get with, there's a Sharpie and there's oil and water based. I tend to use the, sh the water based. Um, but it's got pretty good coverage. Sometimes you have to let it dry a little bit and then come back in. But if you want more fine areas, um, then you can use here. Well, let me get a sheet of black paper here. Uh, this here is a jelly roll. 
This is a number eight, but here you can kind of see. I use these a lot whenever I do like my, if you ever seen me do my blueprint sketches, um, that's what I'm using for there. Or I'll use a, use the Deleter White with a brush. Make sure you use a separate brush than the blacks because you're never going to be able to get all that black out of your brush. So always keep a separate brush for your white ink or else you're just going to get a bunch of gray. So that's just a demo of some of the different tools that I use. Uh, I am not the best at talking while drawing. So I'm gonna, basically what I'm going to do, I've got this. This actually I did digitally, This the penciling on this. And I showed the whole process on my Patreon if you're curious about that you can check me out at CircWorks on Patreon. But I did another printout. I am going to redo this. I'm going to use some of the uh, some of the tools that I just showed you. Uh, but I am going to do that. I'll speed it up and I'll be a little more efficient that way. So I'm going to get back to this. So while I'm speeding this up, I want to talk a little bit more about the tools that I use for inking and uh, and just let you know that the tools don't necessarily make up the artists. It's the, it's the artist's hand. And no matter if you can't afford some of these tools, that's all right. I mean, I started like everyone else, just a pencil and a paper. It, what, I've been drawing for a long time before I even really understood the idea of inking. Um, and that's one of the great things about growing up nowadays is, is you have all this stuff at your fingertips with the, with the internet and everything. And you can see all these techniques where I had to kind of go hunting for it. Or like I said, sometimes I didn't even know that these tools exist, but you know, it's also a lot of experimentation the tools that I use like you know I'm right now I'm just practicing using the uh, using the quill and I'm that's really not a tool that I use that often like I said I'm primarily a brush inker that kind of changes and no matter what stage you are in your life and you know just practicing sometimes you have to switch things up try different tools some tools will work better for for other people uh, just differently and some people will gravitate more I know anchors that just do amazing jobs and just solely use just the um, just the quill where others like myself at least in the past use brushes but it never hurts to experiment and play around and it, it is it's just a matter of practicing the only reason why I'm not that comfortable with the quill is because I don't use it that much so you know whatever you use and whatever works for you is great you know and and it also comes down to style like I mentioned if you want more of a uniform line style then maybe just inking with microns is the way to go if you want if you want you know your lines to have a little more variation to them then brushes brush pens all that but that does come with a big learning curve and a lot of people shy away from the brushes because at first when they first start off it's like oh you know either I'm too heavy-handed or just I'm not getting the the look that I want uh, so maybe they would stick to microns because they're a little more I don't know, user friendly I guess um, but don't be afraid to experiment with with new tools and see what works better for you I mean I always get people wanted me to recommend my tools and I'm happy to do that but I always have to have the caveat that you know just because I like a particular tool doesn't mean necessarily you will but it is just playing around with different tools and that's kind of what I'm doing now that's why I'm sort of doing this illustration and using a number of tools whether it's brush pens or tech pens or uh, whatever or a quill or you know I'm just testing out different things and and also some tools work better for certain things um, I'm finding that if I want a really 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 thin hair thin line uh, that quill is really going to do it whereas the brush pen to me uh, has a little more versatility uh, just because I ha I can't like curve the angle of the quill in such a way that it feels that it flows for me but that's just me I mean other artists can can do that with ease when I draw I draw pretty loose so a lot of that comes through with the ink now some people like that some people don't some people find um, that if the pencils are really tight it's just a matter of kind of going over over the lines it's a little easier to tell where the lines go and they get a better look and I've seen that too when on times where I've done uh, really tight pencils uh, the inks look pretty solid whereas when I pencil very loosely the ink seems to look loose as well and I, for better or for worse I like that because it's it just has this more organic feel to it it's not as tight but not everyone prefers that so it has to do with style it has to do with tools it has to do with your proficiency with those tools but um, 
hopefully in showing off some of these tools, showing off some of these techniques and how they work, it'll just at least open your eyes to what you can do with particular tools. And like I said, just try them out. But also it doesn't hurt to play around with other things. I've done like stippling or like splatter effects with toothbrushes or using sponges to create sort of rock textures. Or I've even recently been experimenting with um, if you saw the video I did with that the art hacks video that I just put out uh, before this one actually uh, I was experimenting with makeup brushes and just uh, the eyeliner pins and, and uh, getting some kind of cool wood grain effects so just play around inks kind of a really cool medium if you if you play around with it and at this being October October or inktober rather if you're watching it um, it's a perfect time to experiment with these and if it and if you're watching this later on um, inking like a, I've mentioned this before is just like a 365 day a year thing for me because I, I just I love the art of inking I love comics and all that so hopefully this video was helpful hopefully you got something out of it and if you have any questions uh, just you know hit me up let me know what your favorite tools are all right so those are some of my favorite tools for inking my favorite tools but what about you guys what are some tools that you guys use for inking what are some of your favorites I would love to know because I'm always interested in trying new things out and if you want to try out the tools that I've used I will leave links in the description so you can do that uh, other than that uh, I you know I'm gonna go because I want to do some more inking hopefully you guys will do the same I'll see you guys later that is all Hey, thanks for watching. If you like what you saw and you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. Also, you can follow me at SerpWorks on social media, and now you can support the work that I do on Patreon. Do you like making comics? Then go to SerpWorks.com and pick up the Comic Maker Starter Kit. It's packed full of fonts, brushes, templates, and more. And best of all, it's totally free.